Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Costa, a veterinary ophthalmologist at Angel Animal Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Today, I'm sharing with you the case of Jar Jar, a 160-pound Great Dane who recently presented to me for cataract surgery. So this is Jar Jar's left eye positioned under an operating microscope. And you can see the cataract in the center of the eye, the large white opacity. Jaja's under anesthesia, so she's not feeling any of this. This is the initial incision actually at the top of the eye if she was standing up, about three millimeters into the cornea. We then make what's called a stab incision into the eye with this special blade. And you'll see a gentle release of the fluid or the aqueous humor from within the eye here. We then inflate the eye with a substance to keep it firm during surgery, which wasn't shown, before making a stab incision with this needle into the anterior lens capsule. We then do in the bag cataract surgery. So I need to tear a hole in the front of the capsule to get at the lens while leaving the rest of the lens capsule intact so that we can put a false lens in later on. This is the capsular axis and you're seeing me tearing what should be a perfectly circular hole in the lens capsule, which will minimize trauma to the eye during the rest of surgery. With that out, we then introduce the phaco emulsifier tip. This is actually a, a high frequency ultrasound probe and it basically is like a little jackhammer. It breaks up the lens using ultrasound vibrations. And as the lens breaks up, it'll be extracted through the cannula, through the needle itself. There's also fluid being pushed into the eye by this specially uh, made instrument. And you can see here sculpting the lens, removing the central portion of it, taking out this cataract. We'll jump cut ahead a little bit, and here the cataract is now breaking up. There's fragments on the bottom left and the top right of the view. And we're taking out the firmer nucleus, or the central area of the lens with this probe. The two round things, those are air bubbles just floating around. We'll get rid of them in a minute. Here comes some of the lens nucleus. And the rest of it's breaking up. And as this happens, you can start to see the tapetal reflection, which is that green eye shine at the back of the eye. You're seeing the retina now behind the lens, deep at the bottom of the eye. And there on the left is a blood vessel, if you look close. And the remainder of the lens is coming out. Now, after removing the harder nucleus of the lens, we have to go back and get the soft cortex. This is almost a jelly-like substance and it's aspirated or sucked out of the eye here. And here you can see me peeling it off the posterior lens capsule. This is pretty thick stuff in this dog. And there it goes being sucked out. And again, notice in the very back of the eye, you can see the red lines. That's the optic nerve and the blood vessels on the retina. Here we remove the remainder of the cortex. This is the intraocular lens and we're injecting it in through the small incision, that three millimeter incision. This lens will unfold into the eye, and the lens provides a much better focusing ability for the eye. Not all surgeries can take a lens, and it tends to be in the dog that those animals still do very well. But if possible, I always try to put in a lens. And you can see it unfolded. We're now just going to position it, make sure that it's in the center of the eye, so that the clear visual axis will be present. It's gone white again because you're having a much brighter reflection from the back of the eye. Imagine capturing a dog's eye at night. I put a white circular thing on the cornea just to protect the retina from the very bright operating microscope light. And here I'm getting the sutures finished. So this is 
suture material thinner than a human hair to tie up that 3 mm incision. And then we reinflate the globe and Jar Jar's cataract surgery is done. If your pet has cataracts, vision problems or any other eye diseases and you live in Boston, visit us on the web at this angel address. Or if you're not in the Boston area, you can go to acvo.org to find a veterinary ophthalmologist in your area.